All right. Uh, first and foremost, you know, with all those things being said, um, you know, let me wish everybody, the veterans, a happy Veterans Day tomorrow. Uh, thank you guys uh, for your service, men and women in this country and throughout our world that have provided safety and all those things. So happy Veterans Day. I want to make sure I got that out there tomorrow. And, uh, and then Glenn Rogers Sr., what, what an honor to be able to recognize him tonight, a pioneer uh, for the University of Memphis um, and, and for our football program. You know, someone that, you know, we, we talked about heroes earlier in the week, and man, he's a hero to so many in what he was able to do. And so it was great that we could recognize and honor him tonight. And then thirdly, my buddy Jerry the King Lawler, I, I, I got to, you know, try to pay attention during a football game, but when you hear his old, old butt yelling on the jumbo trying to get up on third and fourth down, it was great to see. And obviously to be able to walk with him at the Tiger Walk was great. We know how much he means to the city, and he's someone that's an honor to call for. And so all that being said, great to get a uh, win. Um, you know, are they much needed? Yes, they're all much needed. But uh, like I said, the guys all along, even when I sat up here, for the last few weeks, and it's been uh, frustration and disappointing. Um, the message hasn't changed to the guys. The fight and the belief of those young men have continued to be there. And I can tell you guys that all you wanted to hear, but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter until it shows up in a win column. Really proud of the way the defense came out and battled. I mean, it's oh, one of the best performances I've seen uh, by a Memphis defense in a while. They, they did an excellent job throughout most of the game. Um, you know, something I, because I think it's what we, happens in our program usually stays within our program because it's not necessary to share with everybody. But on Tuesday's practice, we were down 28 guys with flu like symptoms. Um, we missed 37 total players on Tuesday's practice, which th this week and a short week was much necessary. We had guys that did everything in their power to try to will themselves through the game, which give them credit. Obviously, we never want to put anybody in, in harm's way. Uh, we were missing some guys, and we have been the last few weeks, but that's okay. Uh, we got to get healthy. We got to get well. Um, and look, it's a new week, 1-0. Just like I've told our guys all along, learn from this. We've got to get better. There's a lot of things that we need to get fixed uh, sooner than later, and, and we will. But these guys are going to continue to fight and believe and, and find a way to go 1-0 next week. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I think the biggest thing that concerned me was, um, one, we got to get our drops fixed. You know, the turnovers have to go away. And that's, you know, we've turned the ball over, and and that's what's hurt us in the losses, in my opinion. You know, there's other things, obviously, right? Let's let's call it what it is. But the, the turnovers, that that has to get out of what we're doing offensively. And, it, and it's, it's – I'll lose sleep over it because we work on it, we talk about it, we preach it. And you turn the football over in college football, it's hard to win games. And so that is affecting our offense. Um, obviously, the inability to run the football at a high level, that is concerning to me. Um, we we got to be better. we got to keep our quarterback upright and protected. And so all those things. Um, it won't show statistically, and I'm not saying this because he's sitting right here, I thought Seth actually played one of his best games of the season. He made the right reads. He did exactly what he was supposed to be put in the right position. Now, statistically, you may say, well, how could you say that, Ryan? Uh, but I, I truly believe. I thought it was a pretty clean game by him. And, uh, but we've got to be able to catch the football. Too many drops. We've got to be able to own the football and not turn it over. We've got to be able to line up and run the ball effectively. And it's, that's not just the offensive line. Uh, I thought our tight ends in the first half did a pretty poor job blocking. Uh, I thought everybody involved didn't do a good enough job in what we needed to get done in the run game. And so all that being said, there's there's things we can fix offensively. I think we can catch the ball better. I think we can own the football better. And then I've got to dig deep and say, okay, how can we run the ball more effectively? And so, yes, it is concerning. Um, I'll look, as you guys well know, deep and hard into this and figure out what we can do offensively to continue to improve and be more consistent. Yeah. How big was that? Huge, right? Huge, and that and affecting the quarterback, right? I think tonight's one of those nights that we were able to affect the quarterback uh, that may have also led to some of those, and then obviously one of the fumbles and then the INT. So it, it's, it's huge. It makes a huge difference, um, and that, that's what we preach. And I told our guys all the time, I said, we can talk about getting takeaways. We can talk about owning the football, but until we put into action, 
it's just writing on a damn whiteboard. And and our guys got to let's go live it. And our defense certainly did that. And uh, proud of them. And we got to continue to get takeaways. Um, but just all in all, the overall effort by the defense was fantastic. No, I feel great. Uh, I, I really do feel great, other than my voice. Uh, it's been gone for about five. I think probably it was breaking, going away for me at the last press conference. But um, it's a combination. I, like I told our team, I said, if you feel 100% in November, and I told our staff, if you feel 100% in November and our players, man, then well, shame on you because, it, you know, and same with you guys, right? Like nobody should feel 100% right now. We should all be grinding and working. And, um, so, yes, I, I feel great relatively speaking um, but yeah just and it's not a, it's not always negative yelling it may be positive it's a combination of a bunch of things what was that scene like in the locker room days since you oh <laughs> it reminded me it felt like a uh, and that I've always been very transparent with you guys it felt like a weight was lifted um, and that, let's let's call it what it is it just you know you and that guess what doesn't mean anything if we don't go out and win the next game and so that's the nature of this business but it was it, the guys to see the smiles on their face and um, and to see okay we know we're capable and like I've told you guys all along and again this is I don't want to sing the same swan song because if it doesn't show up and wins it doesn't matter but that's why like the full-blown panic didn't occur because the guys kept doing it the right way the guys kept believing Valley had they quit three weeks ago yes I would have sat up here with terrible body language, a woe is me mindset, and a and the, all hope is lost. But it's not, right? Okay, so I, I, I sat up here last week and told you guys, okay, so we, we got, we're gonna win, we're gonna win out. Okay, so we won one. Now, clean slate again. How do we win the next week? And and that's the mindset and that's the approach. Um, and so there was a lot of. Uh, happiness and joy in the locker room, but also the same understanding that there's things that need to get worked on. And so I want this to be a, a positive press conference, and I'm, I'm quite happy that we won, but there's things we got to work on for sure. Before you lose your voice, Veterans Day is not just one day a year for you. You've been doing it last year, this year, and every game. Can you talk about the Yeah, look, none of us are here if it aren't for those people that serve. And uh, I'm one of those that, you know, when I say my prayers at night, I always thank those that served. And, um, you know, well, there's family in the military, but we, most of our players, I have actually asked them at times, like, how many, and I will tomorrow morning in our team meeting, how many of you guys have had somebody in your family that served? And guess what? 95% will raise their hand. And I said, let's make sure we thank them. And, and we have to be grateful because we're in a world of – craziness in society and you guys know I live a, as much of a bubble as anybody but let's not forget those that uh, came before us and did those things you know and that serve our country and that continue to do so and some of those that gave the ultimate sacrifice for us uh, and we should forever be grateful and it's just like when we get to honor anybody and uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll thank them and be appreciative of them every single day um, but tomorrow it's a, just another way we can honor them on a more national level. Brian, you mentioned that this is kind of a, a much needed win. Um, how much did you guys, did you sense players or everyone else just kind of felt the weight? You said it was like a weight lift on your shoulder. How much did you guys feel the weight coming into this game, knowing that it has been a four-game losing streak, the bowl streak is in jeopardy? How much did you guys kind of feel that pressure, I guess, just sensing around the locker room and around the team before it lost? The yeah, so, uh, you know, I know you had asked about that in the, the uh, press conference during the week, and, and I kind of hinted on, alluded to that, Pressure, and I think our guys, because I don't talk to them about, oh, the guys, the, the pressure, the weight. We know our back's up against the wall, and there's only only options to come out swinging. But pressure is really only felt by those that aren't prepared, those that don't believe. And so our guys work their tails off. They believe. They come to work every day with the right attitude. So Seth Hennigan doesn't feel the pressure. Quindell Johnson doesn't feel the pressure. I don't want our staff to feel the pressure. Nobody's going to put more pressure on ourselves than ourselves, right? More onus to get the things done. And so our guys don't sit there and say, man, coach, there's just, well, they, they blocked out the noise and gone to work. And for me personally, I, we all take so much pride in doing it the right way and winning football games. That's, you know, the, the game is football, the business is winning. And we take so much pride in doing it. And we've been too close not to come away with a win and, and 
So th nobody's holding themselves more accountable than ourselves, and it starts with me. So for me, the way off the shoulder is okay, good. Now, it, it, and the, the great news is the buy-in's been there. But now I can coach these guys a little bit harder. So I can tell you what, I'm going to get on their tail a little bit more this week coming up okay hey this is what we have to do and why and and sometimes i always say this we coach our guys harder in wins because they understand that all this work and all the reason now it's coming to fruition and it did you know just one night but to make it happen over and over and over we got to continue to improve so to be clear you said you didn't feel any more pressure this week than normal no i, I never will feel any more pressure this week than any other week you guys have different people step up and pass catching Yeah, you know, I think, right, you, you're exactly right. We always talk about the variety of receivers that we have here. And it was also talked about uh, in a, in a, on the TV show at one point, you know, just say the, the use of different wide receivers. And I said, you know, forever we had, okay, Anthony Miller's our go-to guy, and then the Calvin Johnson. Now we've got a bunch of guys that we really have faith in and trust. And so tonight Javon was able to step up, find the holes in the zones, um, and make the catches when needed. You know, he even ha he'll be the first to admit he had to drop on the, the man coverage where right? he had it clean. It, it would have been a heck of a catch. But um, so there's things that he continued to do. But, you know, he, he just continued to do it and trust it and play at a high level. And, and Seth was able to find him on some of those targets. And that's the, the you know, we, we talked about the sentiment. And, you know, I talk about in generalities things that we need to work on, right? And first and foremost, you know, the keys to victory going into this game for our defense were, one, stop the run because they've had done a nice job. And we also weren't sure what quarterback we'd see, right? So then in that quarterback situation, how do we affect the quarterback? We had to be able to get home. I don't have the final stat line on sacks, but I think we did affect the quarterback, right? Uh, you know, Bren's a guy that, threw for 400 yards versus Ohio State last year. Uh, he's a guy that almost led them to win versus Cincinnati versus Ole Miss. And, you know, now they had another quarterback that came in and played at a high level in, in number one. And so uh, I think we affected the quarterback. Um, and then the third one, key to victory, was get off the field and third down. And there's still a couple that, man, you know, it wasn't perfect. I don't know the final step, but I, I think they did the job that they were needed to do, obviously with the two takeaways as well. But I was pleased with that because I think they, you know, when you're checking the boxes, okay, if we do this, we can win the game. If we do these, and, and all those things that they need to do, they did at a very high level. Coach, where did the smoke come from? Yeah, you know, I think it's the nature of um, – Two teams probably pissed off to win, if I were to guess. Now, you guys will know, so we were six in the country and least penalized teams. And I joked around, maybe we need to crank that up to get some more wins, right? Maybe we need to. Uh, and, but I always like to think that our guys are going to play smart after the whistle. And I, I'll be honest, I was displeased with our team after the whistle. We can't retaliate, OK? And so I, I want to do everything up to that gray line in between the whistles. I mean, I want to battle, I want to fight, I want to claw, I want to whatever the heck it takes. When that whistle blows, walk away. It doesn't matter what they do, what they said. And I didn't think we did a good enough job tonight of doing that. And so I told our team in the locker room, I'm disappointed, we will get that fixed. And they all to T understood. And, um, and because our guys get it and are mature enough to understand, yes, coach, that's not what we do. And that's not, that's not our culture. That's not our standard. So we will get that fixed. Um, but I, I, I love, I'm, hey, I'm good with them going out there and, and playing, you know, hard in between the whistles and in those white lines. Do you think that was maybe the cleanest game you played special teams wise all year? Yes, that's a great question. I, I do. You know, we had the, Tanner Gillis did a nice job on kickoffs. He did have one out of bounds, so that's a penalty that puts him at the 35. I thought Joe Doyle gave us a chance with his punch. You know, last time, um, I talked about one, he actually outkicked the coverage, which you say, what the heck does that mean? But he, you know, but he did a nice job. Chris Howard came back and, and, and did a really nice job. Uh, again, I've, my biggest concerns all season have been the coverage units. I was pretty pleased with them. I thought the guys ran down um, with great speed and, and it, with the right approach to it. So, yes, I was. Overall, it seemed pretty clean. Uh, and Eddie did a nice job feeling the football um, and, and getting up the seams and the return units. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, that's exciting because when you can play, and I, I said this to you know, some of the, one of the things on a short week, special teams can be a big difference maker. And then, you know, we always go back and we look at hidden yardage, you know, where it was and what was that. But I, I was very pleased, all in all, just off the surface with our special teams.
trying to hear Caden didn't have any <coughs> accolades, had very high expectations, but he hadn't proven anything. At the end of the year, he was a finalist for one of the best tight ends in the year. In the year. He had a crucial catch in the red zone to extend the drive. How important is he to this team? Yeah, so first, I'm going to get on his butt about fumbling the darn ball. So as soon as his name is mentioned for a darn award, I'm going to kick him in the tail. Uh, you know, go figure, right? But no, caden has been fantastic. I mean, and I, I always go back to his story, right? Like, that, that's what's so remarkable about, about a, a guy like Caden that came here as a walk-on quarterback. Uh, but he's he's been huge. Obviously, he's been a, a, one of the favorite targets of Seth, and uh, and rightfully so. He, he's playing at a really high level. Um, but he'll be the first to admit tonight was not a good night. Um, but, you know, kudos to him. He, he'd been battling. Um, last week, he had a great game. And, and, and it, on the floor, exhausted after the game. He's, you know, gave everything he had. He's been battling some of the sickness, but he's done a great job. Uh, he, we continue to expect him to play at a high level. Brian, you guys are now one game away from bowl, but I know that's the minimum standard. You've talked about that. With this season not maybe being the standard you guys would want, how does it feel to kind of have that still in play now? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, we do talk about, you know, we know what the next win means. We do. And I, and I probably won't talk to our guys about it because that is the minimum expectation. The reality is win the next one and then win the next one and then win the bowl game. But, yeah, Evan, I think, you know, when I pull myself back, you know, even tomorrow I'll sit there and say, okay, this is a, a, a good step in the right direction, right, to, if you can win a, a bowl in the next game, right, we got to go out and play. Um, and hopefully we're having this conversation next Saturday night. Um, but it, that, that is important. It really is because it's, it's an accomplishment by the young men in the locker room. Uh, but I don't. I won't harp on it this week. I'll just say, hey, we, how do we get better? Let's focus on ourselves and go get ready for a North Alabama team. They have a, They had a change in head coach. Um, we've had some guys that do some advanced scouting. They've changed their scheme completely. Um, and that gives you concern. We're also their last game of the season. So it's going to be one of those that we're going to see a bunch of different stuff. And so we have to be dialed in and detailed and play our best game. Uh, I'm glad we get them here at home and our guys will be ready. Do you have to still feel like it's not necessarily a reward, but at least with that still in play, does that still at least be something to say, hey, like you say, it's a step in the right direction. Do you more on that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think anytime that there's a reward for wins, it's great, you know, but. Like I said, it is the minimum expectation. And for our guys, there's things that, you know, I'll talk to you guys about, but that I'm not going to go talk to our team about, all right, guys, let's go win this game for a bowl game. No, because that's not what is going to motivate them. I always talk to them that motivated, motivation and inspiration is just temporarily. And so the discipline to actually get better, discipline to show up and practice hard and find ways to improve, that's what I want them to hang their hat on this week. And guess what? Then maybe next Saturday when the game's done, we can talk about the reward that came with hopefully a win. And then immediately, as you guys know, we'll put that one to bed and then say, okay, let's get ready for the next one. Yeah, and kind of to piggyback off what I was just saying, to Evan was, we're, I won't. They know that, but I, I'm one of those that doesn't. It's such a narrow focus on the next game. They won't hear me talk about anything other than, okay, guys, tomorrow morning I'm going to say, look, th that was one of our deals. Boom, check that off. We still are going to go when one game at a time and went out like we talked about. But as soon as that's done. All right, how do we focus on North Alabama? And that will be our only focus of the week is how do we get better and, and get healthy and well and, and come out and compete next Saturday afternoon? Thanks, Rob. Thank Thanks, you, Rob. guys. Appreciate you all.